Next, we're going to look at an animation app. We've always had kids um, show us a process in various contents. I think especially of like the water cycle or plant growing, so two science ones there. Um, but if we wanted them to show that through an animation, it usually involved a flip book, right? That would you had to redraw the scene every time. Now we have wonderful apps like this one. This is called Mugida Web App. When I go into that, you're gonna have to log in and you'll have to apply for an account is how they set it up. But basically just head in here, um, enter your school address, and it's, it's a fairly automated process. So I'll just log in with my school here. And once you do that, I'll bring you to this home screen. They call these creatives. So what I'm going to do is create a new animation. When you get to this screen, it's fairly crowded, I think. So I get rid of some of these extra windows. I do that. I push this blue button over here, which will minimize uh, that top part. And now I can see my canvas for, for my animation. Um, I'm going to do a really simple example just to show you how this can be used. Obviously, there are um, all kinds of educational applications. And uh, what I would really recommend is spending a little time, if I go to help, they have these tutorials they've made um, to, to help you with those basics of how I get things to start animating and drop them on the canvas and stuff like that. I would definitely go through that because I'm not extensively doing that right now. So if I jump down to my canvas, what I'm gonna do is just a simple archer shooting an arrow to show you the animation. And what I'll do is uh, pause the video here, skip through all of my drawing to save us a little time. All right, so you can see I have my archer and the target, and that's all on one layer that I'm gonna call background. I, I don't expect anything to be moving on that, so I'm just gonna call it that. I'm gonna add another layer right here, and I'm gonna call this arrow, because that's the only thing that's really moving in this entire animation. So now I'm gonna draw the arrow, and I will make that a different color, so why don't we make that red? And now what I'll do is, just for now, I'll draw the arrow here. You'll see why in a second. I'll draw it here. If I would draw it over the bow, when I would try to select all the pieces, it would try to select the bow as well. So that's why I'm just drawing it out here. Now I'm going to choose this, you know, uh, choose the select tool, and then under uh, modify, I can group it. So I'm going to group it. Now it's just one arrow. So now I put it back into place, and now this is a slightly, slightly goofy part. So. Let's say I want this to be 30 frames long. You can see there's, these are all frames up here. But when I click on 30, I just lost all my frames. So what I can do is I can put, uh, click animation, insert frame. And what that does is it basically copies that frame through all of these. So every single one of those frames. And I'm going to click on background and do the same because I have to do it for each layer, insert frame. So I have both of these. And now what I'm going to do on my arrow layer, and again, the tutorials are going to take you through this, is I'm going to do animation, insert tween animation and what it can do is you can see it inserted this little dot on that frame and what that does is it gives me basically what's called a keyframe where um, the program is going to be smart enough to take me from my initial frame to that keyframe so now what I do is I select my arrow and I move it over to the target and you can see that once I run the animation now it's going to basically insert all those middle parts that it needs to and you can already see the time saved that, you know, when you had to draw it in a flip book, that just took forever. Now, let's say I want my arrow to kind of go up a little bit and then down a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go in the middle here and I'm going to insert a keyframe. So that's just another point in the animation process. And now I'm going to select my arrow, move it up a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is now if I run it, you'll see. That works, but the arrow kind of hovers instead of flipping at all. So now what I'm going to do, going to do is go to my last frame and choose um, this what looks like resize tool, but it can also rotate. So I'm going to rotate my arrow a little bit and then move it up. You know, I want a bullseye. And what I can also do is do the same at the front end. I'm going to rotate it so it's aiming up a little bit, and certainly I could spend more time, you know, making the archer actually leaning back. But now if I run it, you can see it, it reaches that middle point and then it starts to flip down. So you get the idea. Something to show a process saves us lots and lots of time. I uh, just want to quick show you the way to share this because I can save it um, through Mugida. So save, I call this Archer. <clears throat> and it's saved, but it's a, it's a little goofy when you try to export it. 
um, as an animation. The, the much simpler way is through this little QR code generator. I could scan this and it would take me right to it, but I can also open the preview in another page and then I can just grab this URL and I can put that wherever. So if students are making, um, you know, like I said, a plant growing out of the ground, then we can just preview it, grab this uh, URL, and then we can drop a whole bunch of them into a website where I'm gonna embed them.